Hello and welcome to my first YouTube video on woodworking. While making this video, I realized I was wearing the hat that I wore in my very first YouTube appearance. So I made this little flashback clip. Because I was... Inclined. I posted a few videos back about a production run of pencil making fences that stressed me out because my shop was disrupted by construction and too many projects in the works. In this video, I'm stepping back to show you the lead up to that state of affairs. This was early this year, and I had a ton of production work to do, primarily twin turbo vice jaws and bench dog tops. And this was the case because I was working through a conscious effort on my part to introduce products that I was producing. You might ask, why Andy, after having figured out how to sell things that are entirely produced by third party fabricators, would you try and do more of the work yourself? Isn't your time better spent coming up with new ideas? Partial credit if you guess that I made this decision because there's always something to be learned from production work and it's good that I spend time in the shop making things, whatever they are. Also partial credit if you guess that Avid sponsored me with a CNC and production tasks were a good way to show the value that it added. But there's a more compelling reason to do this, cash flow. The thing that I've used most from my MBA has been this mug. But second is the concept that you can go broke launching and selling profitable products. That's close to an exact quote from my finance professor. Every new product requires an inventory, which needs to be paid for before those products sell. And as sales of a product increase, generally so does the average amount that needs to be kept in inventory, further constraining cash flow. And that's not to mention the upfront development cost for these new products. If your profit margins are good, then you'll be fine in the long run, but rapid growth in the short term can cause problems if you aren't careful. The standard way to go about dealing with this is financing. If you haven't read or listened to Shoe Dogs, the story of the genesis and growth of Nike, I'd recommend it. It's surprising how much they talk about their biggest struggle, convincing the bank to increase their loan continuously as their business grows. The bank is conservative, they don't believe in the business, and it's just this huge albatross around their necks the whole time they're trying to build the business. But that debt path isn't for me. I needed another way to shore up cash flow for the business and making my own products was it. Long-term labor hours spent on production need to be carefully accounted for to make sure that your business is profitable. I think the products that I've been making so far will pass this test and I'm starting to transition them to this long-term way of thinking, but I ignored it initially and just donated my hours to the business. And this means for cash flow purposes, the margins can look better on these products. Production in my shop also means a much tighter production and sales cycle. I can do small batches right when sales happen and never have large inventory positions that can tie up cash flow for months or even a year in some cases. So I improved cash flow at the expense of some burnout, made worse by the construction project that messed up the shop and caused irritation through the whole process. And that pencil making fence work was really the low point. But as I said in that video, things are looking up. I pushed through the pencil fences and started getting my shop organized and it is in a much better state. And as luck would have it, Grizzly saw me doing this shop organization work and asked if they could provide me some storage solutions to help me out. I of course said yes. This is their T33254 61 inch nine drawer tool chest, link in description. It will sit on its very substantial casters in the spot where my lathe had been with a new lathe on top of it at some point I believe and my very over cluttered shelves will soon look a lot better. This is an exciting sponsorship. Grizzly has been my choice for a lot of my big stationary machines and I'm glad to be showing off their products. And as for the products I'm producing, I said I was transitioning them to the long term plan which involves some help in the shop. My neighbor's son is in his early 20s and interested in woodworking and actually has his own little pallet making business. I modified a saw to help his production work in this video that's popping up in the top right. And he has some extra time to come over and work on various things once in a while, including product production. This is a big help and my hope is that we can both justify an increasing amount of time that he spends doing this kind of stuff in the shop. Thanks for watching. Um, Dad, how is it turning?
Well, you gotta join my channel to learn how I did that.